We've all been there in the early days. You're walking along the road, chilling hard. Off to the side, you spot an open base, and it looks like there could be some loot inside. So you walk on over, ready to take that easy dub. And for a second, you can barely imagine your luck when... The trap base is part of the magic that is Rust. And if you look at the small library of videos I've put together so far, you'll notice I tend to have a bit of a bias towards these bad boys. Aside from patch notes from Shadowfrax and a few other video makers, trap bases are one of the only Rust videos I personally seek out. I love seeing them, and I love making them. But something a lot of trap base creators are guilty of, myself included, is showing you a sweet contraption with no reference for how they constructed it. With that said, today I'm here to show you how to build not one, but three different trap base designs. Let's set the bait. The first design we'll play with is about as basic as it gets. If we're honest, placing a shotgun trap next to a door frame is about as effective as the most sophisticated trap bases, but we're here to put together something hopefully a little bit cooler than that. Before we get into it, keep in mind every trap will need the resources and tools to build the 2x2 with triangular honeycomb, on top of the mentioned components. You're gonna need two sleeping bags, a pressure pad, a wiring tool, a door controller, two double doors, and at least one shotgun trap. But the more the merrier. Start with a standard 2x2 foundation, and wherever you place your door, place this wall on the other side in parallel. Put two double door frames perpendicular to that wall and slap some doors on those bad boys. You can use the room closer to the door for the TC at storage. On the door frame farther from the door, link a door controller inside this room. Now place your pressure plate somewhere in front of the door with a door controller. At this point, you'll want to wire the pressure pad to the door controller, keeping the wiring as discreet as possible. Don't worry about powering anything, as the pressure pad itself will send a brief signal strong enough to toggle the door controller momentarily when it's stepped on. Finally, place the two sleeping bags on top of the pressure pad so it can't be seen and your shotgun traps inside the room facing the pressure pad. And voila, we have a functioning trap base. If you want any luck in catching someone though, it's best to make the base look as lived in as possible. So I'm just going to take a second to add some pieces that make this look more like a home. And there we have it. You don't really need to commit to a full workbench, but tier 1's are fairly easy to come by and it'll definitely add to the illusion. By placing this furnace here, I've added more utility to make this look like a base, significantly hidden the wiring to the controller, and it's also the only container the player will see to check inside, which helps path them right over the pressure pad into the kill zone. Super easy to build, you can throw up this trap within a few minutes if you got the supplies. So we've got a basic trap base done, and it looks pretty cool. But what if we want something a little more... shocking? With a bit of power to play with and a few more complicated components, we can put together an electric powered base that kills using... you guessed it? Electricity. Check it out. You're gonna need a bit more comps for this build, so I'll run through those here first. The first difference in this build is gonna be the entry point. Where we made the previous base look like the doors have been raided or decayed, we're gonna make this one look like a roof panel has been blown out so the player has to drop in. And there's a really functional reason for this. The Tesla coil has been out for some time now, but it's still one of our newest autonomous killing tools, and I personally think it's really underutilized. It's got a unique movement impairment functionality, and when you're being electrocuted by one of these, your jump height is actually nerfed to the point of not being able to clear a half wall, which is what we're gonna take advantage of here. I like to find a good piece of terrain for this guy so we can make it easier for people to hop in. Start with a 2x2 again, leaving a square in the roof closest to your piece of elevated terrain. On the opposite corner you'll place your turbine, and you can go as high as you need to for power, but I'll just elevate it by 1 for now. Put your door somewhere under this turbine, either side works, and then place a wall and a door frame to cut the base in half like this. In this room we've created, place a half wall to make a shelf and then ditch the half wall. I'm gonna go ahead and place my two Tesla coils, here and here. Place a branch and an A and D switch on this wall, and bring the power from the turbine to the branch. Place a heartbeat sensor underneath this shelf, and branch 5 power to it, then branch the pass through to one input on the A and D switch, and the power out from the branch into the other input. At this point, if the A and D switch is fully green, everything should be working properly, but make sure you exclude authorized before continuing to wire, otherwise you'll wind up like Marvin's sensor. If one port is red and one is green, you're good to keep going. Place another branch next to the A and D switch and wire the A and D output into the branch input. 
At this point you can include authorized again for a moment to find out how much power is coming and it's split it equally, but setting the branch out to 20 is a pretty safe bet. Again, make sure you exclude authorized before wiring, but take the branch out from that branch and pop it into one of your Tesla coils, and the power out into the other one. Now we're going to place the furnace in this corner to make a hop in, as well as conceal our coil a bit, and the trap is pretty much finished. I like to put chests on the bottom shelf only so they have to drop in to open anything, and I find a tuna can lamp in this corner can do wonders for hiding that last tesla coil. If you've got a bag nearby, you can test whether it's working by including authorized players on the heartbeat sensor, but just know that if you do, it could be a pain in the ass to get back in there to exclude again. And there you have it, your own tesla coil trap. This is a fun one to build, and tends to be a bit more successful than the previous one, so hopefully you can catch yourself some loot. So now we've used power to drain lives, and it was pretty sweet. But what if you want to be able to make the final call on whether or not your victim gets to leave at all? Maybe you want a chance to talk to them about the latest Kendrick album before they die. And what if you could make all of these decisions from your cell phone while you aren't even playing the game? The final trap I had for you guys is about as complicated as I've ever bothered to make one, but it should still be pretty straightforward to put together. Let's build it. The first part of making this build isn't going to happen on your PC, but in whatever marketplace you use to get apps on your phone. Download Rust Plus and log in your Steam account. Next you'll want to hop onto your main server, or whichever server you want to set up the app for, and link your app here. This will allow you to view the map and message teammates offline, receive death messages from the server, and most importantly, interact with some key electrical components while you're not playing the game. For now you should be set, but we'll be returning here shortly. Here's a rundown of the supplies I want to make this guy. Once again, the basic design is going to be a simple 2x2, two two, but this time before placing the internal walls, we're going to complete the honeycomb and put our front door here. Now each one of these three little triangle rooms are going to serve their own unique purpose. The front door is simply an airlock, but despite knowing that more doors equal better, simply place one more door on this internal wall. This back room is going to be our TC spawn and viewing room. Pop a door on one side and a double door frame with a shop front on the other. I'm just a fish. I can't read your base. Now one of these side rooms, place a wall on a shelf and a door. We can use this for storage as well as furnaces if this is your first base down you'll be farming resources from here. And finally, on the opposite side, place two double door frames and two double doors. Use shooter high qual, I don't use garage doors as they open so slowly it gives players a bit too much time to react and try something cheeky. 10 years later. These are the kill doors, and this room is for stuffing with traps. Because of the space in the room, it's pretty important one of these traps is an auto turret as the range will be inescapable inside the base. But I also added a couple flamethrowers and shotgun traps for good measure. And because it's funnier to walk. With this room loaded up, your base should be fully constructed. So now it's time to plug it in. Put in a power source, I'm just gonna use a single turbine which should be sufficient. But it might be worth mentioning that if you want to be extra sure you're powered, you can place a large battery in one of your side rooms and wire the turbine to that, then wire that to the rest of the base. Starting with this wall, we're going to place four splitters here, then a splitter above an XOR switch above a timer switch. Then on the wall to the right of that, place an A and D switch next to a splitter. Finally, place a smart alarm somewhere on the floor in here, and a heartbeat footstep sensor next to the door in the interior airlock, as well as a camera somewhere to give you a full view of inside. Bring the power into this first branch and set the branch out to 10. Then bring the branch out to the first input on this XOR switch. Plug the power into the bottom of the next branch and set this one to 10 power as well. This one is going to branch out in the input of the timer switch and the power out is going to daisy chain in the next branch again. Now we'll set this guy to 5 power and branch the branch out to the heartbeat sensor by the front and the power out to the last branch down here on the left which we're going to set to output 10 power. That will then branch into the first port over on our A and D switch. Now go grab the output from the heartbeat sensor and plug it into the other input on the A and D switch. If this part seems a tad over complicated, blame it on the godforsaken fact that regardless of how much power we give a heartbeat sensor, it can only output one power. So the A and D switch is a workaround to trigger a lot more off of that sensor signal. Why are the A and D switch output from the branch we put next to it? The standard 2 output is fine here, just why the branch out from this guy into your smart alarm. You can put whatever you want as a message here, but when you get this message, you should have somebody stuck inside. 
If I want to take the power out from that branch into the toggle on port on the timer, take the timer output and plug it into the other port on the XOR switch, and take the XOR output and plug it into the branch above. Both outputs from that branch are going to go to the two door controllers on your airlock, doing what you can to keep the wiring discreet. With that, the worst part of the circuitry is done. You can test it out by enabling authorize momentarily on the heartbeat sensor. What we've done is made it so that both door controllers are on the airlock are constantly receiving power which leaves them in a constant open state. When somebody walks inside, the heartbeat sensor activates the timer, which sends power to the other port on the XOR switch, cutting power to the doors and locking that person inside. It also triggers your smart alarm to message your phone and let you know that your traps have been sprung if you're AFK. Now the doors will only be closed for the amount of time you still on the timer, which is totally up to you, but I generally go 1800 seconds so the doors close for half an hour. Now to finish this thing up, place two more branches underneath these two on the left, and a smart switch below them. Daisy chain the power out from the bottom left one into the middle one, and branch five power out into your camera. Again, name this camera whatever, but remember to use an unique identifier so people can't get onto your feed. Or just global chat the identifier once you catch someone so they can watch your evil plan unfold. Now branch the power out from that branch into the last one, and set it to 10 power. This 10 power is going to go to your auto turret, and the power out is going to go into the smart switch. I'll call mine the kill switch, and you can guess what activating it will do. Pop one last branch in the kill room, and bring the power output from your smart switch to that branch. Then take both outputs from the branch and plug them into the door controllers for the door. And just like that, you're fully wired up. Make sure to link the smart alarm, the camera, and the smart switch all to your app. And you should be able to use this trap just about as effectively offline as online, which at this point, might look something like this. Now baiting this trap is going to be pretty difficult, and frankly, the most effective tool is going to be some people's least favorite aspect of Rust. Roleplay. You can dress it up like a saloon, turn it into a winter wonderland, or maybe put a vending machine inside so people are incentivized to enter. The choice is yours, but if you're struggling for inspiration, you can check out this video I put together, which essentially uses the same trap design with a few minor mods. Although admittedly, we were online for every kill, as it was just too much fun to watch. And that's pretty much all I've got for you today. As always, thanks for watching. Your likes and subscriptions mean the world to me, so I really appreciate all you guys for checking this stuff out. And if there's any more guides or videos you're itching to see, drop me a comment and I'll see what I can do. Until next time, gang, peace out.